Noise. I think we're in the shot. A little bit. Come sa. Perfect. On the Hilu Hazel 10 403 to the HAZ. Mr. Nelson here. Greetings. So we're doing part two here of the introduction to functions and relations. And I just want to quickly jog the memory from the last video. We've talked about the three different ways we can represent relations, relationships or relations, right? And a relation is just basically, I like to think of it as input and output, okay? So if I was to input apple, it would output, in this case, apple is red or apple is green, right? So apple red and then apple green, if we kept that. I could also represent that same relationship with an input output table. The input's fruit, it outputs all the different options. And you know, I, I made changes to this, so apple can also be green. And then we can also <clears throat> represent data as ordered pairs. Now, full disclosure, the arrow diagram kind of disappears after grade 10 because it's just, it's really more for, for visualizing really simple data. It just is, it, it's not, we, we, we have a table. Why, why use an arrow diagram when we have a table? We have ordered pairs. And in this video, we're also going to talk about um, the most important, I think, is graphically. Representing functions and relations graphically. And when we represent them graphically, there's a, a, a quick little test we can do to check whether it is a function or relation. Now, a, relation, a function is a relation, but a relation is not necessarily a function. A function is a type of relation. A function is a type of relation. It, it lives under the relation subset. Ignore what I just said. I don't even know what I said. Um, so not all relations are functions, but all functions are relations. That's what I meant to say. Not all relations are functions, but all functions are relations. And a relation, any relation, we can have more than one output for the same input. Okay, so apple can be green or it can be red. Okay, but for it to be a function, we're, we can only have one output for a specific input. So an apple can only have one output. Okay, and we'll say it's red. That's what makes it a function. So let's erase this, let's start now looking at some data. So let's say, oh my goodness, I gotta wash this board soon. Let's say I gave you a, a set of ordered pairs, okay? Remember, ordered pairs come in this form. This is to open it up. And let's say I had one, three, comma, two, five, comma, three, seven, comma, four, nine, we'll say. And one last data point, we'll say it was six, three. And I close that. And let's say I had another data set. Okay? I had another data set which was one, two, two, three, one, five, two, six, and two, nine. Okay? Whoops. I'm sorry, this is slanty, whatever, deal with it. So nice, okay, now I want to represent both of these um, data sets. This is a data set, of ordered pairs. These are ordered pairs. I want to represent each of these as a table of values, and then I want to graph them. So I am going to, this is really bugging my OCD, but I'm just going to ignore it. Just going to ignore it, going to ignore it. And I'm going to call my inputs x, and I'm going to call my outputs y. Because in math and in life, that's just the way that we start dealing with stuff. x is normally my input, y is normally my output. Why is that how we went? I don't know, but it's just, just roll with it, baby. Okay, so we got x. Holy crap, Mr. Nelson. Get it together, dude. Okay. 
X and Y. So black is going to be black, red will be red, okay? This is good enough for my table of values. I don't need to label this because it's an X and Y table. We just know it's input output. So I'm going to put all, I'm going to put all my inputs. And remember, all my inputs are going to be my X's are always my first data point in an ordered pair. So I'm going to put one, two, three, four, six. Okay, I pulled off and they are going to go now beside each data point I'm going to put its Y. So at X is one, Y is three. At X is two, Y is five. At X is three, Y is seven. At X is four, Y is nine. And at X is six, Y is 13. Okay. That's the first one, and let's, let's graph it. I'm gonna graph it, okay? I'm gonna make a graph, there's my y-axis, there's my x-axis. My inputs on a graph, my inputs are always on my x-axis. In science, my x-axis will be my independent variable, okay? And y will be here because y is affected by the independent variable. It's dependent. So the, the x-axis is always my input or my independent variable. The y-axis is my output or my dependent variable. My output depends on my input, right? So I'm going to graph this. I've got uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I've got Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. 10, 12, 14. Okay, on my y-axis. At one, at x is one, I have y is, so this is two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. At x is equal to one, on my x-axis, I have y is equal to three, so I go right there. Okay, and that's just my data point, that's how I write my data point. At x is 2, I'm at y is 5, so y is 5, okay. At x is 3, I'm at y is 7. At x is 4, I'm at y is 9, something like this. And at x is 6, I'm at 13, I'm at y over here, okay. This is a function, and now I should have, I'm gonna, I should have a title. I'm, I'm not going to put it, oh. Y versus X, X, Y. Good enough. Now, we know that a function has only one specific output for a specific input. That is to say, if I had one, I'm only going to have one when X is one, Y is three. I'm not going to have another X is one. I'm not going to have another data point where X is one and Y is five, for example. Right, because now I have two different outputs for the same input one. And I can check on a graph whether it's a function or a relation by using the vertical line test. And all the vertical line test says is, is there any point along my graph where a vertical line crosses more than one point? And in this case, you can draw all the vertical lines you want and no vertical line is ever going to intersect more than one data point. So that's, that's an extra little test you can do for functions or relations. Uh, <clears throat> so let's do this one now. Let's check this bad boy here. So let's create another table of values. X, Y. X1, X2, X1, X3. My outputs are 2, 3, 5, 6, 9. Now you should already be, be kind of being like, hey, okay, this is clearly a relation, not a function, because hey, I got an output of 2 for 1, but I also have an output of 5 for 1, and I have an output of 3 for 2, but also 9. So what would that look like if we were to graph it? Well, I'm going to have one, two, three on my x-axis. My x-axis is my horizontal axis. 
And at one, I, so I'm gonna have up to nine, so two, four, six, eight, ten, that should do it. Eight, four, two, that's a zero. So at one, I'm at two. At two, I'm at three. At one, I'm at five. At three, I'm at six. And at two, I'm at nine. Now, if I do my vertical line test. Oh, look at this. My vertical line intersects two points. Here, there's only one, but here. Boom and boom. So, that confirms the fact that we have a function and not a relation. I think that's all I'm going to do. In the next video, I'm just going to briefly talk about uh, function notation. So, as we move ahead with functions, you know, we're going to get into the place where my output is equal to 2x plus 1. So, my output for any number x is going to be that number x multiplied by 2 and adding 1. So, if I wanted to create a table of values for this function, I'm just going to choose some random x's, 3, 4, and y will be each x, 2 times 1 plus 1 is 3. That's going to be my output. Now I'm going to input 2 for x. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. So when x is 2, y is 5. And I could fill out my table with all my x's. Now we, also, we could also write y as my function with respect to x with an input of x. So my function value, my output, which is f, with my input x is equal to 2 times whatever that x is plus 1. And that's going to give me my output. We'll talk about this more. I'm hoping I didn't talk too fast, but this is just really like setting the stage for everything else we're going to do. So thank you. We'll talk soon.